Okay, in our video series of infectious medicine lectures, in this video, we are going to talk about neutropenic fever or neutropenic sepsis. We are going to discuss what is the presentation, what are the causes as well as the management of neutropenic fever in detail. First of all, what is neutropenic fever? Whenever there is fever in the presence of neutropenia, neutropenia is that the absolute neutrophil count is less than 500 neutrophil per microliter. Normal neutrophil count is from 2500 to 7000 neutrophil per microliter. If the neutrophil count is less than 500, that is called as neutropenia. And when the neutrophils are down, immunity is weak because neutrophils are white blood cells and white blood cells protect the body from infections. So when the neutrophil count is low, there is high, the body is prone to get infections. And when the body is prone to get infections, there is fever. Fever is defined as single oral temperature greater than 38.3 degree centigrade or 101 degree Fahrenheit or greater than or equal to 38 degree centigrade for at least one hour. That is called as fever. So fever in the presence of neutropenia with absolute neutrophil count less than 500 is called as a neutropenic fever. Usually the presentation would be that you would receive these patients in emergency department and these patients would be running fever and when you take the history they would tell you that the, that patient is having some kind of a malignancy and for that malignancy patient was started on certain chemotherapy and recently he received that chemotherapy. After receiving that chemotherapy now that patient has presented to you with fever. When you perform the CBC and the differentials CBC count you will see that the neutrophil count will be low, will be less than 500. Therefore, their immunity is compromised and these patients develop infections and they develop fever and they come to you. There is drop in the neutrophil count and there is increased susceptibility to infections. That is a classical presentation of neutropenic fever. Neutropenic fever is an oncologic emergency and every passing minute you're losing time so you don't have to waste time in these patients and have to treat them immediately it is an emergency whenever a patient presents to you with fever with neutropenia the first thing that you have to do is that you have to classify the patient based on a certain scoring criteria the scoring criteria for neutropenic fever is called as mask score in the mass score, you score the patient according to the clinical presentation as well as the past history. I'll discuss what is mass score and accordingly, you classify the patient as low risk and high risk. Low risk patient is treated outpatient, that patient goes home on oral antibiotics. A high risk patient needs to be admitted and treated in hospital because that's an emergency. What is mass score? Mass score judges the patient on certain criteria and the more healthier the patient is, the more score he gets and the low risk it is. So if the patient is having higher score, that is a low risk patient and that patient goes home with oral antibiotic. If a person has low scores, it means that the person is not healthy and there are risk factors present and that patient needs to be admitted. Burden of illness, mild or no symptoms, moderate symptoms and severe symptoms. This is a very subjective kind of domain in mass score and if there are no or mild symptoms, patient gets 5. If there are severe symptoms, patient gets 0. Hypotension, that is very important. If the patient is hemodynamically unstable and patient is not maintaining blood pressure, feeble pulse, that patient gets 5 score and that patient must be admitted. No chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. If the patient is having COPD, that is very important. Because if the patient is having COPD and that patient get neutropenic fever, that patient will require steroids, oxygen, and that patient must be admitted. That patient might even need ICU care. So if COPD is there, that patient gets zero score and that is a high risk patient. If the patient is having no history of COPD, that patient can be treated at home and that patient gets a score of four. Solid tumor or hematologic malignancy with no previous fungal infection or empiric treatment with fungal infection in the past. If the patient has no previous such admissions where he needed anti antifungals, it means that that patient was not immunocompromised to a state in the past that he needed an antifungal antibiotic. Therefore, that patient will get a score of 4. If yes, then score 0. No dehydration requiring parenteral fluids 3. 
outpatient at presentation 3 if patient presents for emergency that gets 3 age if greater than 60 0 if age if less than 60 2 so more healthy a patient is the lesser risk factor the more score he gets and the low risk patient it is if the patient is having more severe illness hemodynamic instability copd age greater than 60 solid tumors or previous antifungal administrations that patient is a high risk patient and gets low scores therefore that's a high risk patient if score is greater than or equal to 21 that's a low risk patient if score is less than 21 that's a high risk patient patient with fever and neutropenia you do the mask score the next thing is that you order the relevant investigations you establish an iv access you obtain two sets of blood culture and you take two sets of blood culture for aerobic and anaerobic separately so two sets is equal to four samples two aerobic and two anaerobic samples of blood culture you order cbc you order liver function tests you order creatinine renal function test serum lactate to look for sepsis these patient of neutropenic fever are very prone to get sepsis and they will develop disseminated infections and they will be, they will not be maintaining blood pressure and they will deteriorate very rapidly so you will have to have a good eye for sepsis serum lactate you have to look for blood glucose hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia in a patient who is not diabetic and has neutropenic fever hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia in such patients who are not diabetic is an indication that that patient is developing sepsis you also do electrolytes you look for potassium you look for tumor lysis syndrome you do serum calcium you do serum phosphates you look for hyperkalemia in this patient you also do uric acid levels in these patients to look for breakdown high uric acid levels hyperkalemia means that there is tumor lysis syndrome going on in these patients because these patients are receiving chemotherapy and chemotherapy target cells and when those cells break down they release potassium they release uric acid in the body then after classifying the patient according to the mass score and taking the baseline investigations you immediately start the patient on antibiotic therapy remember remember it's very important to start empiric antibiotic therapy within one hour after they present to you it's very important we discussed in video on fever of unknown origin that this was an exception that neutropenic fever was an exception where you immediately start antibiotics you immediately start antibiotic because if you do not start antibiotics within one hour after their presentation it increases mortality in these patients that's a very high yield point now how do you start antibiotic you start antibiotic based on the scores whether that patient is a low risk or high risk if the patient is low risk that patient goes home with oral antibiotics and the oral antibiotics that the low risk patient can receive is fluoroquinolone with amoxicillin and clavulanic acid amoxicillin clavulanic acid 875 milligram per orally bd fluoroquinolones include ciprofloxacin 750 mg per orally bd or levofloxacin 750 mg per orally od now if the patient is allergic to amoxicillin what you can do is that you can add clindamycin to the fluoroquinolone if the patient is allergic to penicillin and cannot take amoxicillin you can add clindamycin 600 mg per orally 8 hourly with the fluoroquinolones now sometime it happens that these patients these low risk patients when they come to you with neutropenic fever they are stable they are not having any hemodynamic instability their age is less than 60 no copd in past they are just having the fever with the neutropenia but they are otherwise totally well usually these patients are already on fluoroquinolone prophylaxis because these patients are receiving chemotherapy these patients are immunocompromised usually they are already taking fluoroquinolone prophylaxis if the patient is already taking fluoroquinolone prophylaxis no further antibiotic addition is required you tell them to continue the fluoroquinolones and they should come to the hospital if their condition deteriorates but if the patient is not taking any fluoroquinolone prophylaxis you need to give fluoroquinolone with penicillins if the patient is a high risk patient a high risk patient is the one that is hemodynamically unstable that has a history of copd that patient age is greater than 60 that patient is having deranged renal function test deranged hepatic function test elevated serum lactate 
hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia. Now, this is a patient that is going towards sepsis that might have developed sepsis. Now, this is a patient that requires immediate attention, that requires immediate admission. This patient will deteriorate very rapidly if not treated in time. This patient will require monotherapy with stronger broad spectrum antibiotics. You give meropenem 1 to 2 gram IV every 8 hourly. Other than meropenem, what you, option that you can have is piparsilin tezobectum 4.5 gram IV every 8 hourly. Imipenem silastatin 500 to 1000 mg IV every 8 hourly. Cefepine 2 gram IV 8 hourly. So one out of these antibiotics is uh, chosen according to the patient and monotherapy is started. Now, in which patient you can you have to add another antibiotic with these very strong broad spectrum big gun antibiotics. If the patient is having necrotizing intra-abdominal infection, in such patient with this monotherapy, you also have to add metronidazole flagyl. With this monotherapy, if the patient is having any risk factor for MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus if you do the nasal swabs and it turns out that that patient has colonization of MRSA that patient is having a very uh, resistant gram positive organism so to cover that you add vancomycin with this monotherapy so patient came with fever and neutropenia you calculated the mass score you took the blood samples you scored the patient into a high risk or low risk then the next thing you have to do is you have to start the empiric antibiotic therapy within one hour of the, of the presentation. Then if the fever does not subside, if the fever lysis is not happening, if the patient's fever is not improving, the patient is having persistent recurrent fever after the fourth day of IV antibiotics. This is concerning. The next step you have to do is that you have to add antifungal drug to these patients. Because remember, these patients are immunocompromised patients and if with these big gun antibiotics, with these strong antibiotics, if the patient is not responding, maybe it's not a bacterial infection, maybe it's a fungal infection that is causing infection in these patients. And most of the time, the, the cultures and these reports are not back. You must add antifungal therapy because immunocompromised patients usually develop fungal infections and they must be treated with antifungals. What antifungals can you use? You can use voriconazole 6 mg per kg IV every 12 hours for 2 doses, amphotericin B lipid formulation 3 to 5 mg per kg per day. With amphotericin you have to monitor potassium level because it causes hypokalemia. You have to monitor renal function test. You can give caspofungin, mycofungin. So one of these antifungal therapy must be added on the fourth day if the fever is not subsiding. A very important point is that these patients present to you with fever and as we know that among the methods of checking uh, temperature, oral temperature, axillary or rectal, rectal is the most accurate one. But in patients with neutropenia, you avoid checking rectal temperature because when you are passing the probe through rectum, there is a chance that you might injure or tear the gut, mucosa and blood barrier and you might develop a tear in the mucosa that will introduce bacteria into the bloodstream and will increase the risk of infections because these patients are immunocompromised patients and there is increased risk that these patients will develop more infections. There is increased risk of introducing gut bacteria to the bloodstream. Some certain precautions that you have to take in patients with neutropenia. These neutropenia patients must be put in an isolation room a well sealed room with laminar airflow so that there is no uh, bacteria in the room. Whenever the doctors are entering that room, they should wear N95 mask and should wear the apron. Organic materials should be prohibited near the patients and HEPA air filters should be used so that there is minimal contact of resistant bacteria. As we know that in hospitals, there are many kind of resistant bacteria that are present in the hospital that are resistant to antibiotics and these patients are at very high risk to develop more and more infections. So you have to isolate these patients, have them in well sealed uh, negative suction rooms so that they have decreased risk of getting infections.
Now, before going to the checklist of neutropenic fever and neutropenic sepsis, another thing that I want to discuss is that whenever these patients with fever and neutropenia come to you, you, you do the mask score, you take the bloods, you stratify them into high risk and low risk. When you admit these patients, you start them on antibiotics. If they don't respond to the antibiotic therapy, after four days, you add antifungal therapy. And after antifungal therapy, if there is an evidence that there is uh, any ant viral infection present in that patient, you also add antiviral drugs to these patients. And another thing is that these uh, certain drugs that stimulate the production of neutrophils, these are called as GCSF, granulocyte colony stimulating factors that stimulate the production of neutrophils. These are not routinely recommended in the treatment of neutropenia. Moving towards the checklist, a checklist that you can use in your hospital whenever you have a patient with neutropenic fever, you identify and treat sepsis. It's very important. I have a full video on sepsis. You can check out that video uh, on my channel. You obtain at least two sets of uh, peripheral and central blood cultures. You assess the risk and start appropriate empiric antibiotic therapy within one hour. You consider additional diagnostic workup based on the likely source. You also find out that where is this infection coming from. You look for uh, urine cultures. You look for chest x-ray. You do certain investigation. Look for abscesses in the body. Uh, look for any other finding, any hidden abscesses in the body. So you identify and control the source of infection start supportive care, antipyretic analgesics, IV fluids, urinary catheter removal and replacement if you are thinking that the urinary catheter is the source of infection. Start neutropenia precautions, the filters, the isolation, hematology, oncology and infectious disease team must be consulted. And patients uh, should be transferred to ICU if the patient develops hemodynamic instability. This was all about neutropenic fever. Before going into the summary, if you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button. In summary, we talked about what is neutropenic fever. It is an oncologic emergency and the common presentation. You do the mass score, you stratify the patient, high risk, low risk patient. Then you take the blood samples, you start the empiric antibiotic therapy. If the patient is having low risk, you give oral antibiotics and patient goes home. If the patient is high risk, that patient gets IV antibiotics and that patient is admitted. If the patient is having additional uh, in sources of infection, you add the antibiotics to the monotherapy. If the patient is uh, uh, not responding to the antibiotic therapy, then you have to add the antifungal therapy. And this is the empiric antifungal therapy that can be used in these patients. Avoid rectal temperature, the precautions that you have to take and the checklist that you can follow whenever a patient of neutropenic fever comes to you. This was all about neutropenic fever. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on infectious medicine lectures. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.